Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video on Salesforce Bolt. Guys, recently Salesforce has introduced a functionality using which you can include external third-party Lightning Web Components in your application or in your custom Lightning Web Components. This feature is so cool, you know, whenever you need to develop a custom Lightning Web Component, there are chances like there might be already a Lightning Web Component developed for it, which could be a third-party Lightning Web Component. So in this video, I'll show you how you can include these third-party Lightning Web Components in your Lightning App, in your Lightning Web Components, and how you can leverage its functionality. So let's start today's video, guys. I'm Kapil, your host, and you're watching Salesforce Bold. All right, guys, let's start today's video. So as this is something recently introduced and uh, it is still in beta version. So there are, you know, a couple of limitations right now what we are having uh, while including a third party lighting map component. Like there are a couple of limitations, like only close shadow ROM uh, mode is supported for third party components. And uh, this load script module uh, won't be supporting for ECMAScript and uh, third party components with NPM and other dependencies are not allowed basically. So if you are able to find a third party component which includes uh, overall JavaScript classes and functionality, in that case you can use it. Okay. Now to build that functionality guys, I have already created one application here. And let me show you from where you can find it. So to find the Lightning Web Components, uh, external Lightning Web Components, there are multiple websites. So for today's demo, I will be using webcomponents.org. So there will be two demos in it guys, I'll show you two components. So first I'll try to include a date component. So for example, you just need to search for the component here. Let's say I have search date. Then here you can click on more element to see date examples here. Okay, now these many components are related to displaying date over the UI. Okay, now let's try this JB date input component. I'll quickly open it here. Okay. So this is the external component guys, which we are going to include in the custom lightning web components. Now the first step is to ex uh, include any component is to have its JavaScript and uh, have and loading it in your component. Okay. Another way could be to download the CDN locally maybe and uh, then you can refer it uh, using some external JavaScript file. But today we'll be importing it as a static resource and then we'll be uh, loading it using this load script sign okay so here uh, you can see the javascript of this component which is in unpackage.com if it is not available uh, extracting the javascript from unpackage is pretty simple you can just simply type unpackage.com type your component name and at the rate then you can simply add the version of it but as it was already provided for this component so we will quickly go through it okay now as the next step you need to save it uh, as a file in your system and uh, then you need to import that file uh, in your static resource. So for this demo I have already included it in my static resource. As you can see there are so many files. I was trying this with multiple components and uh, this date picker I think this is the one JD uh, date input. This is my uh, that file which I showed you here. Okay. Now to include it let's go to lightning web component. Okay. So it is just going to have a simple UI. I will just include that component. I'll show you how it is going to look. Okay, so let me quickly create a lightning card here. As a title, I will add date component. Okay, I'll add a class as well. As an inner 4D class and let's add an icon as well. Let's add a standard search icon here. Okay, so this is my lightning uh, card. Now to include that component, if I'll go here, so this is the component, right? So we can simply copy it from here and paste it here. Okay, now this was the JavaScript part. Now let's move to, sorry, this was the HTML part. Now let's move to JavaScript. So first we will import load script. Okay, from lightning platform the source loader. Okay, now we will include the 
jb date input file from salesforce resource url because it is in my static resource and now i will enter my static resource name okay now we have included that file okay now we need to load this script in a render callback basically so i'll quickly initiate a render callback here this component initialized false because i don't want my render callback to initialize again and again on every function okay rendered callback okay now if this component initialized is true then return otherwise make it true okay and then load script we'll have script name then okay now if it is loaded successfully i will just simply print a console log this says loading i'll add a catch block as well okay my catch block also i'll just show console log and error okay so i have loaded that static resource here okay now let me save it now in the html guys if you'll notice so this is just acting like a normal tag here now, now how lwc will identify this thing that this is an external component usually with initial com uh, internal components we are having c hyphen that component name but as this is the external component so we won't be having that c hyphen here instead of that we will just include lwc colon external here and let's change the label as well let's make it enter date okay so quickly save it upload it okay it is uploaded now let's go here refresh the page and here you can see the date component guys so this is a third party component which is coming from this library so in this library also here they are having the same component I, now I, if i click here so this is the date component what we are getting from that specific library this is having a little uh, i would say stylish look what we usually get as compared to what we usually get with the normal date component and here if you notice so there are a couple of other features as well like you can add format you can add value in it like the start value you get where you can set today's date in this specific format there are other options as well setting up maximum and minimum limit and also you can get the selected value by calling the on change event of it for that you can simply use document.query selector your input name and you can call the, these functions as well so this was one of the example where we have added this external component in our lightning web component now let me show you another example so for that let me copy this meta first so as in another example i'll show you another component which is a time uh, based component which will basically display relative time so you must have seen in social media or maybe linkedin post also so whenever you'll be posting it won't show you the accurate time it will show you like one minute ago 10 minutes ago based on the relative time right so for that i'll create a new component here let's name it time component okay i'll quickly update the meta file okay this is done in html let's copy the 
similar part from here, paste it here, we'll remove the component and we will change the heading as well here. Okay. Now for time guys, we need to include another component. So for that, we'll go to this Google Chrome and here if you will search for time, so this is time elements. Okay. Now here also to get the JavaScript guys, you can simply use this time element 3.0.0 in this unpackage. Okay. So I'll do unpackage slash time element at the rate, the version, which is 3.0.0. If you will enter, you will be getting the JavaScript functionality of it, which is like independent JavaScript. It is not having any import or any dependencies to any other file. Okay. So that's why this component is uh, suiting the requirement in this beta version and we'll be able to use it. So just to save the time, I'm already having this as well. So if you'll see the static resource here, you can see the time element which is basically the same JavaScript file what you are seeing there. Okay. Now what we will do, uh, so first let me add the time component. Okay. I'll go here. This is time element. So in time element, basically you see there is a local time and the relative time where you need to pass date basically. Okay. So for example, let's pick this one. And this time we'll be passing the value dynamically from the page itself. Okay. So we'll come here, we'll paste it here. Okay. Let's remove this and uh, set the alignment. Okay. Now this date time value guys will pass it from backend. So I'll remove this from here. I will add date here. Okay. And as I said, you need to add the LWC external so that LWC can identify this is a third party external component. So this is LWC external. Now here also we need the similar JavaScript. So I'll quickly go my date component. I'll copy this thing to my time component and also the load script part also we need, right? So where is my date component? Here it is. I will copy these two lines as well. Copy and uh, let's paste it here. Okay, so now we have added these things. Now here instead of this JB date input, we'll need uh, where it is time element. Here it is. So we'll include the time element. So I'll replace it with time element, time element, and here it's called time element. And there we have a date, right? So we need to add a date here as well. Okay. Now we need to add the value on this date. So what I'll do? I'll create a function here. initialize component okay now here i'll assign the value date equals to new date okay and let's try to print the state value as well underneath it okay so this is the date value which is coming here now we need to call this initialize component we'll call it once the script is loaded initialize component okay so we have added the component and we have added the date value dynamically here now if i'll deploy it i need to add it in my page actually so let's quickly do edit page Okay, now we will search for time component here. I'll drag it here and save it. Okay, to save, let's go back. Okay, great. Now here, if you will see right now, it is just showing now here because the time is like current time and you can see the date. So basically this will be comparing the date when this component got initialized with the current date, what is going date and time basically. So if you will check the same thing after a minute, so instead of now, there will be like one minute ago. Okay. So that's how basically you can use the relative time component here. And uh, 
there are plenty of component guys if you will see over this web components.org so you will find a component for everything and there's another website if i'll show you here the lwc recipes so if you will open this thing let me check the time component if it is working okay it is still now we'll check it after another minute so if i'll open this lwc recipes here and here if you will find this uh, third party web component so here also they have used two third party components one is for star rating and one is for just to display a little uh, stylish form and button and all those things so here they have used components from shoelaces so shoelaces is basically another website from where you can get lightning web com uh, external web components okay i'll quickly go back oh now here you see one minute ago if you'll see after one minute if it, it will show you two minutes ago okay so that's how the slated time component is going to work so basically in the shoe rating also you'll be able to find the similar component if i'll search for rating so this is the same component what they have used here in this website right this is the same rating third party web component but this is like having complete cdn so it is not like you can just simply include the javascript file and use it for that you need to include the complete cdn of it as a file in your bundle and uh, then using those references you can use it even though if you will check the code here of this component for example if i'll open javascript and uh, yeah in javascript they might have mentioned yeah So this is the JavaScript of it. Uh, they haven't added the link of that uh, component. Okay, here, yeah. here you can see they have added the JavaScript and CSS file needed for below third-party component are loaded from a CDN in this specific URL. Now, if you will see this HTML file in this URL, so they have basically added the JavaScript and CSS and HTML tags related to this component here in this html file so they have basically added the cdn in it right and there's a documentation of it okay let's go back to our component and it is showing three minutes ago so yeah that it is for today guys and i'll be having complete code on my website which is salesforcepole.com so if you need the complete code just to understand it or just maybe quickly copy paste thing you can simply go to my blog which is salesforcepole.com and get it so that it is for today. If you like today's video, a subscribe to the channel will be awesome, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.